And now, Mike's Thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, Brandon Ayuk has officially requested a trade from the San Francisco 49ers. Brandon Ayuk has have one year left remaining on his rookie deal, and he has been seeking a deal that he is, quote, worth the last few months, even the last year and a half or so. But he has officially come out and said, I want to be traded. So with that being said, one, where would be a good fit for Brandon Ayuk? Is it a team like the LA Chargers? Is it a team like the Carolina Panthers? Is it a team like the Kansas City Chiefs? Second, how bad of a look is this going to be the San Francisco 49ers? Not because, you know, they're, quote, losing players or can't afford him or whatever, right? But I think Brandon Ayuk is the heart and soul of that receiving core. Yes, Debo Samuel is a beast. Yes, George Kittle does work. But the glue that holds it all together is Brandon Ayuk. He has been the most valued, the most stable person on that whole roster. When he was drafted just three or four years ago, my man Marcus sat down and said, he is going to be a game changer. And that is all he has been for the San Francisco 49ers, is a game changer. But then I got to thinking, let me think here. At what point do we need to start holding people accountable? At what point do we say, hey, you signed this contract. You know how it works. Man up and do your freaking contract. At some point, we need to hold people to their um, obligations, to their standards, to their stuff. At what point do we do, do, we do this? Brandon Ayuk wants to be traded. Little man wants to be traded. Knock it up, buddy. But the truth of the matter is, the San Francisco 49ers, if he does get traded, you guys are going to suffer the consequences. Brandon Ayuk is the heart and soul of that wide receiver core. Anybody that wants to come up and scoop him up, instant, instantly, two games better. Cue that intro. Are you ready for the best damn NFL show on the planet? Man Hour Nation! Rise up. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Hitting that gridiron. We're going hard. We're running the plays. You know the vibe. Only the strong survive. Gotta keep your head in the game. Talking in that bell. Uncut straight raw. Steady bringing that sauce. We about to take off. Get it hype. This man, our sport talk. Yeah, yeah. From the quarterback to the lineman. Everybody bringing heat. You don't really want to try them. Hey, hey. Who gon' win? It's a battle of the giants. This show is the flyest. Nobody can. Man, man, our, man, our sport talk, sport talk, man, our, man our sport talk. talk. What team you reppin'? We keep it interesting. Reppin'. Who caught another down? Damn. Who got that interception? This is man, our man, man our sport talk, sport talk. Man, our, man, our sport talk. talk. What team you reppin'? We keep it interesting. Reppin'. Who caught another down? Hey. Who got that interception? Let's go. What is up, oh, Man Hour Nation, Michael Buckhouse here with the Man Hour. We short over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page or check out the blog section as well. But most importantly, check out the forums. The forums are new over there. They are live and they are uncut. The only censorship that we have over on at the forums is myself. And I got some thick ass skin. So you're going to have to talk a lot of shit to get underneath my skin. But with that being said, a person that likes to talk a lot of shit about his Minnesota Vikings is my man. The boy, the myth, the legend, Mike Reeves from the infamous Twist. What's up, Mike? What's going on, Buck? It's been a while. It's good to be back on with you. Yeah, man. Listen, I always loved your guys' show. You guys, I I always looked up to you guys. I try to mock your guys' show, you know, empathize, kind of pull out the best things that you do, which uh, first things first, tell the people who you are and what your show is all about. Yeah, so me and a couple buddies, uh, we've hosted a show for years called Twist Sports Talk or Twist the Weekend Sports Talk. You can find us on all the podcast platforms, Facebook, um, you know it. But yeah, we're just uh, three buddies who talk shit, uh, Green Bay Greg, Matt Benz, and myself, uh, and just have fun. I mean, it's sports, pop culture, literally anything that we we think of, we do. 
couple of Vikes fans and a Green Bay fan. What what can't go wrong, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, you guys are uh, live every Saturday morning over there on your Facebook page. Not every Saturday, Saturday morning. Once a month, right? Once a month. Yep. Is it the first Saturday of uh, each each month, or how do you guys figure it out? You know, we're we're grown adults with uh, you know wives and and kids and stuff like that. So we kind of pencil it in and we, we go live from a uh, sports memorabilia card shop. And so they just have us in for free and are, are, you know, gracious to have us. And we do it out of their, their basement with a bunch of memorabilia around us. It's awesome. Yeah. It's just, so uh, if you guys ever get a chance, go check them out on Facebook. Link is in the description, description below. As Mike mentioned, he is a Vikings fan. I'm not too fond of that hat, but you know, it is what it is. It's uh, subtle. It, I did yeah. some subtlety for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely like in your face. Like you can kind of half see it, but like half don't. But he either way, the Vikings this offseason, Mike, was kind of of a head scratcher, right? A little bit, right? You guys lost your quarterback in Kirk Cousins and also lost your uh edge rusher in Daniel Hunter uh in uh, free agency. How do you think losing of Kirk Cousins and Daniel Hunter is going to affect your team moving forward? Well, it wasn't really a head scratcher here. You know, it was in the in the plan when Quasi Adolfo Mensa came on, Kevin O'Connell, that we were going to start shaking it up, losing money um, to kind of build for where we're at now. We knew we couldn't survive having Kirk's contract, having Daniel's contract, having to pay Justin Jefferson, Christian Derrissa on the left, you know, left tackle spot. So we had to free up a lot of a lot of room and all these teams, as you know, being a Chiefs fan, you know, Patrick Mahomes is paid now, but you need to win on that rookie contract so you can pay everybody else around them. So we knew this time was coming. We knew we were going to lose them. Yeah, it hurts as a Vikings fan to lose Kirk Cousins when when you right. really haven't had a franchise quarterback since Fran Tarkington. You know, Dante Culpepper was almost that and then he got hurt. So to have a consistent guy in the most important position on the team, you know, for the last four or five years, whatever he was here was amazing, but that time's over and it's JJ McCarthy's team moving forward. Yeah, so about it. I'm glad you brought that up because instantly in this draft at number 10, overall, you guys did draft JJ McCarthy. Also this off season, you picked up Sam Darnold as well. Currently per NFL.com ESPN.com all the major platforms has Sam Darnold currently listed as number one. Do you think this is J.J. McCarthy's team this season, or does he have to, quote, earn that spot? It's his team moving forward as an organization. Not this year. As a Vikings fan and a, a lot of Vikings fans I've talked to, we want him red-shirted. Yeah. You know, I want him to sit for a year and learn, and could he come in and, and play well enough right away? Sure, but that's why we picked up Sam, Sam Darnold and brought him in. I called it before the Vikings signed him, that that was who we were going to bring in. You know, we signed him to a pretty lucrative one-year contract, and we're going to use him for that. You know, unforeseen is a, a injury for Sam, but other than that, yeah, it's going to be JJ probably year two moving forward. We'll sign a cheaper backup next year, but I, I think the plan here in Minnesota is to have Sam start and thrive in this offense. Yeah, so speaking of thriving, last season, Kirk Cousins obviously goes down with the Achilles injury mid-season. You guys kind of shuffled quarterbacks, but pretty much throughout the whole season, you were in playoff contention until about week 16, 17, when finally, you know, Astronaut and Nick just couldn't quite muster up those wins. You guys seem to have a pretty good team established as far as offense goes, and defense kind of has a few holes here or there. Dallas Turner was your 17th overall pick. Is he a good replacement for Daniil Hunter, or is Daniil Hunter just somebody you can't re replace? Well, we're going to see. I mean, Daniil over the past three years, you know, was over 10 sacks a game. You know, he's a quiet superstar. He's not in your face, but he's productive. Even when you're watching the, the game, you can't really notice how well he's doing, but he plays well. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think you can replace him. Mike Flores is brilliant. And so he's finally getting his guys in. And Dallas Turner was a huge, you know, he's not Will Anderson. No. You know, they played the same position. They played at the same school. He's not Will Anderson. That's why he went 17 and Will went, what, top five. Um, but he's a hell of a ball player. And to bring in a quarterback and, and a player like Dallas Turner in on the first round where both offense and defense kind of get their toys to play with 
yeah, I, I think he's going to help us out tremendously. And, you know, with the signing of the other Texan, we kind of swapped with the Texans. We got their edge guy. They they got ours. So our defense is going to look a lot different, brought in a lot of different linebackers. Um, you know, RIP, we lost a corner that we drafted, you know, died in an auto wreck. What right. was that, about a week ago? Um, and there was a lot of talk about him. So, yeah, I don't think we're set there. Um to compete for a championship. I'm not walking into this year being naive about who we are and what we're going to accomplish. I don't think we're winning anything this year. If we can take third in the, you know, this division just be, became probably one of the toughest in the NFL, not this year, but for a long time. Yeah, I definitely agree that the NFC North has definitely stepped up the competition, kind of being like a one, like a one man horse in the Packers. Now everybody's kind of caught up with them. And I did glad you brought up that your cornerback that you, that you guys lost in an automobile accident about a week ago. But a few days ago, Jordan Addison, right? He's out there falling asleep at the wheel, allegedly drunk. Um, what is going like? Is it time to just get the guys back in camp and a structure, or is Jordan Addison because this is his second time in as many seasons with off the field issues? Do you think he needs some type of structuring? Or is Jordan, or is just Jordan Addison just going to Jordan Addison? I have no idea what's going on with him. You think these professional players, you know, have buddies who can drive them around? I mean, the fact that he's passed out at LAX at one in the afternoon. I mean, he's clearly got some issues going on with them. Last year was, you know, going 120 miles an hour. He likes to drive fast. Um, you know, I I just don't know what goes through their minds, but they're human beings like all of us. Right. You know, I'm in recovery, haven't drank for six and a half years. And there's a reason because I couldn't manage it. And he's clearly living a life that's a little bit too unmanageable for him, regardless of being a high profile wide receiver in the NFL. You know, he's got some kinks in his life that he needs to work out because he's a huge, huge piece of what this offense needs to do to go, especially with TJ Hawkinson, probably not going to be healthy to start the year. Yeah, uh, and speaking of receivers, obviously J.J. signed a huge contract, the richest wide receiver out there in the NFL. Um, what do you expect from J.J. this season? Uh, obviously, he needs to be healthy, but what do, you, like, what do you think a good expectation is for him is? Well, I expect J.J. things from him. You know, he's just got to go in and work with Sam Darnold and J.J. McCarthy and whoever's going to be that starting quarterback so they can get on sync, but he's the best wide receiver in the NFL. You know, he got over a thousand yards receiving last year and he was damn near out half the year with an injury. Right. You know, he's young. He got his money. I don't look at him as a player who got paid and is going to be any less productive than what we expect from him here in Minnesota. I think you're just going to continue to see J.J., you know, Justin Jefferson things or Jet, so, as he likes to call. Yeah, right. Jet. As a outsider here and as a football coach, I expect Justin Jefferson's numbers to go down this season, not because he's not out there outperforming, not because he's not putting in the work is because team know by now he is the top receiver in the NFL uh, and players like Jordan Addison and Brandon Powell had to step up and be a solid number two and number three receivers on the field. So if JJ or Jet does not get a couple hundred receive, save, 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 receiving yards this season, let's see, he you know he he only has nine hundred yards this season. You as a Vikings fan, are you going to be upset or are you going to see the whole picture? I just want him to stay healthy. You know, good offenses we're built a little different. You know, the Chiefs, you have the best quarterback probably to ever play the game outside of Tom Brady. Right. So they don't spend a lot of money on receivers because he's so good that he can just find everybody. You got Travis Kelsey. You know, we're built differently. You can't just double team Justin Jefferson because we have a top five tight end. We have one of the best, you know, emerging second wide receivers in the league. You know, we brought on Aaron Jones, who's one of the, you know, he's aging, but he's been one of the best pass catching backs in the league. And we finally have a running game um, that we can do something about. So it's all about the quarterback and how that kind of happens in our offensive line and things like that. But we have the weapons to where, yeah, if you're going to double team Justin, Jordan Addison is going to take you deep. He proved that last year when JJ went down that he's going to play well in a DUI or whatever, you know, he hasn't been charged with anything, but he's going to play the 2024 season, you know, something next year, he might get a small su suspension, but, but they're playing. So as long as JJ's healthy and has a productive season, you know, I'm not here to judge him, you know, just play well and give me some fantasy points once in a while and we'll be good.
Right. And so speaking of Aaron Jones, you obviously do a show with a Packers fan. So I do. You, so you got the opportunity to really see Aaron Jones probably a lot and hear a lot about him over the years. When the Vikings signed Aaron Jones, what was your first initial thought? I was excited. I knew we weren't going to get, you know, it was a big market for running backs this year. Um, and I just wasn't extremely confident in going in with what we had. I didn't think we had the draft equity to be able to get, you know, there was really only three or four running backs, two which were going to be productive this year in this draft. Um, so we got him on a one-year rental, and I think we'll probably solidify that position in the draft next year for years to come. Um, but yeah, being able to watch him in my division every year, you know, light us up and torch us. You know, Ty Chandler, he's he's a good player, and I think we'll still use him. Um, but yeah, it's going to be fun. You know, I remember when Favre came and he was a Packer. You know, you love to see those guys switch right. uniforms. And even though Green Bay Greg says that, you know, he was happy and I'm still going to rub it in his face when we play the pack and he torches them. Yeah, you guys do play them twice a year since you guys are both North NFC North opponents, guys. We are talking with Mike Reeves from Twist this week in Sports Talk. You can find them once a sa Saturday here, uh, once a month here at Facebook.com forward slash Twist. But speaking of your running back room, to me, on the surface, it looks kind of weak. Aaron Jones is obviously aging. Ty Chandler, don't know much about him. But you as a Vikings fan, you love your Vikings inside. And now how is this running back room in your eyes? It's not one of the tops in the league. But the good thing about that is this isn't the Minnesota Mike Zimmer Vikings. Um, you know, we're a Kevin O'Connell. We're a pass heavy team. And we're not going to pound, you know, we're not going to pound it down your throats running the game. Um, so it, it really doesn't matter. We don't need to be a running back kind of team. I think Aaron Jones will get it done if he gets banged up. Ty Chandler will be just fine. All right, man. We're, so, we're, we're air raid. We're throwing it all over the place on you. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to uh, probably keep pace with the Lions and Packers as far as points this season because your secondary is a little weaker, especially losing the fourth rounder that you guys drafted uh, this season. James Bradbury could be a camp casualty for the Philadelphia Eagles, the uh, safety slash corner slash kind of do-all guy. Would somebody like a James Bradbury from the Philadelphia Eagles kind of fit into your defense or do you like what you guys got? Oh no, I'll bring on anybody else. And I, I think Mike Flores will the same. That's, you know, what they're great about doing at their jobs is monitoring players like that, bringing them in, seeing if they fit the system. Um, you know, I don't know the intricacies and the ins and outs of Mike Flores's defense, but he knows who he wants and who's out there and who, who fits. And you saw that this off season, yeah with the linebackers and the people he got in, you know, he finally got his chance to kind of build the players and the team that, that he wanted to do. So, yeah, I wouldn't think today is what our defense will look like come September. There will be some additions and, and some people fighting for spots for sure. Yeah. So obviously you guys kind of struggled a little bit last season with injuries, finished seven and 10 last season outside of the playoffs, looking in previous year, you did make the playoffs ultimately lost to the New York giants in the wild card round gun to your head before we let you go how good are your vikings this season you know i we haven't done a breakdown i'd have to look through the schedule you know i don't i don't foresee us being a playoff team and i think that's okay you know i think they know bringing in a rookie quarterback that's probably not even gonna play let's just see what these pieces these new pieces that we brought in this year that are going to be you know molded to the team you know how they fit and, you know, I, I hope we're competitive. I know we have a pretty tough schedule, um, but I wouldn't count us out either. I was hoping that we would tank last year once once Kirk went down and they kept winning and fighting. And it pissed me off because I knew we were going to be in contention for a quarterback this year. And you had to be in the top three to get those top three guys. And we shot ourselves in the foot and got out of there. And I, I like what they did. I like J.J. McCarthy. He's a winner. I think he's going to fit the system great. I think a year under his belt, he's going to come out and be firing next year. But I, I like that. I like having to wait a year. You know, you're used to that with Mahomes. You know, Jordan Love look, he waited four years, damn near. Right. Um, but I think a lot can be said if if they can take some time and learn and adapt and you know hit the field running after that. 
Yeah, and the good thing about the NFL right now is I feel like the 49ers have kind of laid the blueprint out of where you can build a team and kind of plug and play a quarterback, and I really feel like that's what the Vikings are starting to do right now up there in Minnesota. But, Mike, thank you for having us on before I let you go, or thanks for being on, I should say. Before I let you go, tell the people where they can find Twist one more time. Yep. Find us on uh, Facebook, Twist Sports Talk. Once you uh, like and follow, you will be updated every time we go live once a month. Um, otherwise, and on YouTube at Twist Sports Talk. Appreciate it, Buck. Skull Vikes. All righty, guys. So that was my man, Mike Reese from Twist, this week in Sports Talk. We actually recorded that last night. That's why um, there's a lot of stuff that has happened the last 12, 13 hours that we did not talk about in that interview. For example, Jordan Addison just removed the Minnesota Vikings from all social media platforms. He no longer followed them on Twitter, no longer on Instagram. Any mention of the Minnesota Vikings is gone. So I want to raise the question. I want to raise the point here is obviously Mike, a Minnesota Vikings guy, a Minnesota Vikings through and through, roots for his team 100% of the time, all the time, does not have very much faith in them this season. You know, six, seven wins tops. I think they're going to be much better. I have faith in the Purple People leaders and the Minnesota Vi- Vi- Vikings. But without Jordan Addison on their team, Jordan Addison is kind of like what um, Brandon Ayuk is to the 49ers. Kind of kind of that X factor, kind of what holds the team together. As the receiver core, yes, you do have Justin Jefferson, the highest paid man ever as a wide receiver. You do have Brandon Powell. You do have TJ Hawkinson. But without Jordan Addison able to, you know, pull that double team over, do a little bit of this, do a little bit of that, I am a little bit worried about the Minnesota Vikings moving forward. But, we, but, but before we break down this year's, uh, schedule of games here, going through each game like we do each and every day here right now in the dog days of summer. We do have to welcome a couple people into the chat here. We got my man, John. John is in the chat. He's been here a resident, a resident of uh, full time here the last few weeks here. I'm glad, John, you're making a daily appearance over here. And we were talking about the trade that the, uh, uh, the, that the Detroit Lions made to the Minnesota Vikings a couple years ago when they traded – TJ Hawkerson to the Minnesota Vikings midseason. At the time, I think TJ was kind of dealing with that sore back, kind of didn't know what he was doing, coming or going. Turned out to be a great trade for both teams. The Lions ultimately drafted Sam Laporta that following spring. TJ Hawkinson's become a top 10 tight end in the NFL. But I got to welcome my man, John, into the chat. We also got Lou Man 007 is in the chat. He says, I can see the purple people eaters going eight and nine or maybe nine and eight, a seventh seed. And honestly, Lou, that would not shock me at all. That would not shock me at all if the Vikings kind of just like fly under the radar all season long. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, they made the playoffs. Playoffs? They made the playoffs. Kind of like the year that the, uh, when they played the uh, uh, Saints on Nickelodeon and that. Pass interference, that wasn't a pass interference, right? <laughs> I mean, the Vikings, you know, last season they were competitive all season long, despite going through all four, five quarterbacks to, uh, last season. But long, long term, we'll see how the Minnesota Vikings are. Lou thinks we're going to be eight to nine. But what do you guys think? John, Lou, whoever is out there watching us today here at Facebook.com and, of course, YouTube.com. Let us know. What do you guys think that the Tennessee – or, sorry, the Minnesota Vikings are going to be this season? I think they're going to be competitive. But let's break it down, break it down, break it down. In the first game of the year, they do travel to New York to take on the New York football Giants, a Giants team that is probably going to be down. Let's just be honest. There's there's no sugarcoating it. Yes, they do have some weapons. Yes, they have a little bit of this. Yes, they have a, a little bit of that. But at the end, I, just, I don't have very much faith in the New York Giants stock. I think Daniel Jones is going to have a bounce back season. I think Malik uh, um, Neighbors is going to have a good rookie campaign. He's going to be struggling to get open because he's going to be the only receiver. But with, with that being said, I do think the Minnesota Vikings – 
do go into MetLife Stadium week one and they handle business against the New York football giants. I just think they are a better all-around team. The defense is very much improved for the Minnesota Vikings, adding key pieces to that secondary. Van Geekle from Miami was, I think, is a very underrated signing. I think he's going to be a huge asset to them moving forward. But they do their start the season off 1-0. and Week number two. I want to emphasize this very, very loudly for you guys the minnesota vikings do not have an easy front half of the schedule their first eight games are very very tough very very um not in their favor uh just like this week two game they play the reigning nfc champions in this uh san francisco forward 49ers granted it is at home so they still have you know that little home field advantage uh, we have turmoil happening in San Francisco right now. We we just talked about Brandon Ayuk uh, uh, re- requesting a trade. But right now, as currently constructed, I do have the San Francisco 49ers beating the Minnesota Vikings week two. Too much running game for the San Francisco 49ers. One of the weak points for the Minnesota Vikings this season, I do believe, is their front four. They need to add some type of interior defensive tackle to really solidify that defense. And I think CMC... And Brandon, I or sorry, uh, Debo Samuels and the rest of that running back core that they decide to run with, I think they expose that in week two. The San Francisco Forty Nineers do get the victory. Week three, they're at home still, but they're playing another really really good team, and the Houston Texans. This is a Daniel Hunter homecoming. Daniel Hunter, uh, just like Mike said, is a very under the radar player, right? Yes, he does get really, really good stats, but he does it in a very sneaky way, right? He's just consistently around the ball and like you don't really notice him. Like you don't like he like he doesn't get those big sacks or big flashy tackles. But the next thing you know, he has 12 tackles. He has two two sacks. He has a force fumble. He's a really, really good player. The Houston Texans are a really, really good team. They were really good last season. They got better this offseason. Another year under CJ Stroud's belt. Another year under D'Amico Ryan's belt. Added some good key pieces. Daniel Hunter, uh, Joe Mixon, Stephon Diggs. I do think the Houston Texans do win this game. I think they beat the Minnesota Vikings, and John does not agree. He says, nope, they will. They Or sorry, John does agree. They lose to the Texans. Loudman thinks they can beat CJ Stroud. Starting off season two and one. I had them at one and two so 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 far this season. And it games just get keep getting tougher and tougher and tougher right 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 here in this week four matchup. Going to Lambeau early in the season. Jordan Love playing on a contract here. He has not been signed yet as of uh J- July 16th at three o'clock here on the East Coast time. Jordan Love has not signed a big contract yet. So he's gonna be playing on a contract here. I think this season, and he's and he's going to want to ball out. He's going to want to ball out and show the rest of the NFL that he is the guy in Green Bay. The Green Bay Packers made the right choice. I think the Packers are going to be atop of the NFC North this season. They're going to be battling with the Detroit Lions a lot this season, potentially with the Chicago Bears as well. But I do think they lose to the Packers as well. The Packers are just too good. Even even when we want to count the Packers out, they still somehow get nine wins. The Packers are a definition of consistency, and they show that against the Vikings. John agrees, and Lou Man agrees as well. Giving us a week five matchup. This is a game that I, when we did the AFC East, what, three, three weeks ago, I told you guys, I was going back and forth on this game. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I did not know which direction I wanted to go. I think, obviously, with a healthy Aaron Rodgers, the Jets are a much improved team. Now, they're still probably only seven, eight wins tops, but they're a much improved team. At this particular point in the season, I do have the Minnesota Vikings losing three games in a row. Sam Darnold is a starter at this particular point, but they have three losses in a row to the 49ers, Texans, and Packers. Granted, it is against some of the top teams in the NFL. Granted, you do have Sam Darnold as a quarterback. Granted, your defense front four is not very good. But there's a lot of rumblings in Minnesota right now. We're not doing very good. 
let's get JJ McCarthy in. Let's do something. And it and it kind of affects Sam Darnold. It affects Sam Darnold in his psyche because he's playing his former team. Not the 49ers, not the Panthers, but the Jets. The Jets were the team that he got drafted to. He wants to beat the Jets. His butthole is just a little bit too puckered in this particular game. He's playing a little bit tight. If he were to play Lucy Goosey, if they were to beat the Texans or the like or the or or the Packers and being 500 going into this game, I think it'd be, it'd be a different outcome. But right now, I do have the Jets beating them week five, giving us a four-game losing streak. They had a first week win over the um, excuse me. Uh, first week win over the Giants, but since then they dropped to the 49ers, Texans, Packers, and Jets, giving us into the bye week. Into the bye week. <clears throat> right now I have them at one and four. Sam Darnold is not really playing up to expectations, I guess. I mean, I'm not for sure what his expectations are, but he's he's just not looking like a good quarterback right now. There's a lot of rumblings about saying, hey, let's just get J.J. McCarthy in here, right? Addison may not be on the team. J.J.'s still doing J.J. stuff, right? Aaron Jones is running is running, running the ball. But right now, show those guns, baby. But right now, the bye week is tough. Bye week is tough. Give us a week seven matchup. Detroit Lions come into town. As much as the bye week was needed, as much as the... The grumblings of J.J. McCarthy is out there. Sam Darnold is still at the helm. Sam Darnold, I feel, is still at the helm going into week seven. The Detroit Lions come into town, and I think they beat the Minnesota Vikings. I, 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 I think the Lions are going to be a decent team. They're going to digress a little bit. They're not going to be a 13-14 win, <laughs> win team. They're going to digress a little bit, but I do think they are better than the Minnesota Vikings in this particular week seven game Lou man says what's up river <laughs> thank you Lou man for that my little man's out here partying up John says bias opinion but the Lions sweep the Vikes this season and Lou man thinks the Vikings beat the Lions what's up bud rainbow, rainbow friends giving us a week eight matchup right rainbow. we are up to week eight Minnesota Vikings travel to the West Coast in L.A. to take on the L.A. Rams and Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is familiar with the Minnesota Vikings, and the Minnesota Vikings are familiar with Matthew Stafford. However, T.J. Hawkinson. I think T.J. Hawkinson comes out and finally has a game. I think T.J. Hawkinson comes out and kind of puts up some numbers. I think T.J. Hawkinson says, you know what? J.J., you've been getting yours. Addison, you've been kind of flying under the radar, but it's TJ time, right? I think it's TJ time, but that's not enough. That is not enough. The LA Rams beat the Minnesota Vikings. The LA Rams are going to still be a pretty good team. Even without Aaron Donald, they're still going to be a pretty good team. They still have Matthew Stafford. They still have Puka, right? They, they still have the core, that defense. The Rams are still going to be pretty, pretty good. Caroline's in the chat. She says, hey, what's up, Caroline? What's up, Caroline? And John thinks Rams will beat yeah, on the Vikings. Home. Mommy home. Mommy's home? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You hold the door open for her and shut the TV off. All right. I love you, buddy. All right. So week eight so far, only have one win on the season. We now have seven losses in a row, counting the bye week. <laughs> You're silly. Give us a week nine matchup. Indianapolis Colts come up to Minneapolis, Minnesota to take on the Minnesota Vikings. I want to put this caveat in this game. I think the, I think the Indianapolis Colts are going to be a good team this season. I think they have all the pieces in place. They have quarterbacks. They have receivers. Mommy wants you. They have receivers. They have a defense. But the Colts seem to like sometimes overlook quote, lesser opponents. Sometimes the Colts want to think, hey, we're up here. They're down here. Let's, uh, you know, let's kind of overlook them, right? At this particular point in the season, I had the Colts beating the Miami Dolphins, right? Not, not knocking them off their perfect season. But I think 
Sam Darnold finally tightens it up. I think Sam Darnold is tired of hearing all the controversy, right? Just throw it up to JJ at this particular point. I think the Minnesota Vikings get their second win on the season, beating the Indianapolis Colts at home. John thinks the Colts will win in a tight game. Lou Man is the same way here. Colts win it barely, moving them to three and five on the season. I have them at two and six so far in this season. I want you guys to peek something here. So far, the AFC South, they have split with the AFC South. The only win coming over the uh, 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 Colts here. They play a very AFC South next two games here, very, very loaded. They travel to Florida, take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. You guys kind of know my stance about the Jaguars this season. I'm not happy with the Trevor Lawrence contract. I'm not happy with their receiver core. I'm not. The, the the Jaguars scream overrated for me this season. Yes, they still have Christian Kirk. Yes, they did sign Gabe Davis. They still have Travis Etienne. But the Jaguars scream overrated to me this season. However, it's still kind of midseason here, week 10. It's Florida. And playing in Jacksonville... Playing in Florida in general, especially in like August, September, October, it's really, really, really tough. Just because you don't know what to expect. It's humid. It's going to be raining at some point in the game. That's just the way Florida is, is right? And the Jaguars are overrated, but they're still sneakily kind of good. I know I just condescended myself and I'm talking around in circles, basically, but I do think the, Jag- the Jaguars win this game. It is an ugly game. No offense can get going. The defense is just shutting it down. I believe, Lou, man, you brought up the field goal battle with the Vikings versus Titans a couple years ago. This could be a field goal battle type of game. This could be 12-9. to This could be 15-12. to All field goals. All field goals. And James Frank is right. Poor Justin Jefferson. <laughs> yeah. John thinks the Vikings win this particular game versus the Jag- 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 Jaguars. It's tough. It's tough because the Minnesota Vikings have now playing their second game on the road here, and they're playing the fourth in the final AFC South team, and they're playing Lou Man's Tennessee Titans. This season, guys, I love me some Tennessee Titans. I love me some Tennessee Titans this season. Yes, I do know they lost Derrick Henry. Addition by subtraction is sometimes really, really good i.e. Kansas City Chiefs when they lost Tyreek Hill. Started to force him the ball a little bit, kind of got complacent, lose the man, bada-bing, bada-boom, Super Bowl. Not saying the Titans are going to win the Super Bowl, but I'm saying losing Derrick Henry opens up the offense. Yes they, yes, they knew, yes, they got a new general manager, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, all that. I get it, but I, I like the Titans in, like in this game. I like the Titans a lot this season, act, like actually. The Titans might be one of the darkest of the horses in the AFC South. I do like the Titans in this game. And the Vikings right now are just not playing good football. Not playing good football. Two wins on the season. Lost four of their last five. Lost uh, um, seven of their last eight. They're just not looking good. James Frank is in the chat, and he says, J.J. deserves to win. I agree with you, though. Titans going to be way different. Wild card, I think. If the Titans were in any other division, AFC East, AFC West, they would, they, they would probably be willing to winning the winning the divisions, winning winning those divisions. John says Titans blow at, blow out the Vikings week eleven. Lou Man is picking the Vikings to win this game. Moving into four and six on the like on the season. John has them at four and six as well. Right now I have them at two two and eight. Two and eight. Playing the old mighty Chicago Bears on the road yet again. Their third game in a row on the road versus the Chicago Bears. Caleb Williams and that like in the boys. We talked to my man Beastie what Monday. And Beastie was kind of high on his Chicago Bears. You know, 10, 11, 12 wins, right? He said they're a really good team, but they're a competitor. They're com- they're competitors in the NFC North, and I don't think so. 
I think J.J. McCarthy does start this game. I think week week 12, week 13 is when we start to see J.J. McCarthy start to play, whether it be come in and relief in the fourth quarter, second half, whatever. But I do think he does start at some point this season. And I think the Minnesota Vikings do beat the Chicago Bears this particular game. I think J.J. McCarthy it gives them that little boost, gives them that little shock going into week 12. There's no film on J.J. McCarthy yet, right? Brand new office with J.J. McCarthy out there. J.J. is eating. Addison is eating. He's flinging the ball all over the field. He, he just inserts some type of a, 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 a electricity into that team that can't be controlled, much like what, a, what a AP did to the Raiders, right? Once you put in somebody new at the helm, culture changes and everything just just relax like we're not playing for anything just go out there and have some fun and i think that's what the vikings do i think the vikings go out there and they beat the crap out of the bears in chicago at that lou man says they beat the bears giving them five to six vikings are staying live john likes the bears in this one likes the bears in this one moving into five and six i have them now at three and uh eight on the season three and eight on the season give us a week 13 matchup Back at home, Arizona Cardinals, Kyler Murray and the boys come into town. Now, I think this is a very competitive game. I think the Vikings play very well. I think the Cardinals play very well in this game. It is a good football game. It is fun to watch if you're not a fan. If 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 you are a, if you are a fan to either of these teams, you're going to be on edge of your seat all game long. But I think J.J. McCarthy and the Minnesota Vikings get their – his first loss of the season, their um, their ninth loss of the season. I think the Arizona Cardinals come into town, and they kind of shocked them, right? Kind of shocked them, I mean, because the Vikings were playing well. They had that spark. The Arizona Cardinals are just going to be a crap show. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. kind of comes and shows out. Kyler Murray has a big game. I think it's a back-and-forth game. I think it's going to be a high a high-scoring game, 35-31. It's definitely going to be in, be in the 60 total point game, and I think the Cardinals do ultimately come out on top of this one. Give us a week 14 matchup. Kirk Cousins comes back to Minnesota to battle his old team. Falcons, we talked about overrated in the Jaguars. I think the Falcons are kind of of that overrated aspect of a team as well. They do have some good pieces in place. Maybe potentially three years down the road, if they keep building, they can be a, quote, dominant team. But right now, I think the Falcons are overrated. And I think the spark of J.J., I think the I think the uh, 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 spark of the Kirk Cousins coming into town, I think the Vikings play a flawless game. I think the Vikings go in and they beat down Atlanta. I think they are just better than Atlanta. I think they're more confident than Atlanta at this point. I think they are just just a wee bit better, right? Just just a wee bit better. John thinks it's going to be a sorry loss to the Vikings. I think that was for the Cardinals game. Uh, John thinks the Vikings do win this game over the Arizona Cardinals, moving them back to 500. Lou, Lou Man is the same way here, back to 6-6, six to six, back to 500. Uh and then James says, off topic, I, I, I you to be traded from the 49ers. No big deal. No deal was reached. Where will he end up? Sorry for the sequel. We'll talk about that, James. We will talk about that. Uh, the Atlanta loss. So it's moving them to 7-6. Falcons win. I think we're all kind of split on that one. Split on that one a little bit. Week 15. Chicago Bears come into Minnesota this time. Three weeks ago. Minnesota Vikings beat down the Chicago Bears. J.J. McCarthy's first game. This will be J.J. McCarthy's second division game, fourth game of the NFL, and I think the Minnesota Vikings beat the Chicago Bears yet again. I think J.J. McCarthy might go undefeated in his in his division this season. Granted, he didn't start till week 12, right? But he plays the Bears twice. He plays the Packers, and he plays, plays the Lions. I th- he might be undefeated going in, into the division. And right now, the Vikings have won three of their last four. They've won two games in a row. Everything is looking good. Everything is looking clicky until they travel to the West Coast. They travel to the West Coast, and they play in a very hostile stadium. 
a very controversial stadium in Seattle. Pumping on the noise and whatever, you know, you know, you guys know the controversy there. Vikings are riding sky high. Winners of their last three of their last four. J.J. McCarthy is looking good. J.J. is getting his numbers. Aaron Jones is looking like a young Aaron Jones, like he did toward the end of the season last year with the Packers, you know, running all over people. I still think he's getting another 100 yards for the Dallas Cowboys, though, against the Dallas Cowboys. But I think the Seattle Seahawks do win this game. I think the Seahawks are going to be on a mission at this particular point of the season. I not the Seahawks. I do not think the Seahawks will have a chance to win the NFC West, but they'll be battling for that five, six, seven seed till the very last week of the season. I think the Seahawks win. I think they win big. James Frank says JJ balls out three TDs for him in that game, and I think they're beating the Lions twice. I'm not saying that the Vikings will beat the Lions twice, but I'm saying that JJ McCarthy might beat the Lions come Week 18. That's what I'm saying. John thinks the Seahawks will win this particular game, moving the uh, Vikings to 8-7 and seven on the season. Lou Man thinks the Vikings will beat the Seahawks as well, moving them to 8-7, and seven, playoff fever in purple land. Oof. I don't know. Right now, I have them at five wins. Five wins going into week 17. Green Bay Packers come into town. Previous to the Seattle game, they had winners of the last three of three of the last four. Now they're winners of three of the last five. They're still confidence is still pretty high. JJ McCarthy is playing well. JJ's playing well. That defense is finally starting to look like a pretty good defense. I'm not saying they're top ten by any stretch of the imagination, but they're playing pretty good defense. Aaron Jones playing his former team again, but this time at home with the Minnesota Vikings. And I think the Vikings beat the Packers in this game. I think the Packers are battling for the NFC North title at this particular point, and they kind of low-key are potentially looking over the Vikings in this game, and the Vikings come up and they bite them and they win this game. Moving the Vikings to six wins on the season. Right now I have them at six and ten. Six and ten. Lou Man says Packs, Pack win this game back to 500. He has them at eight and eight. John has them losing to the Packers as well, moving them to 8-8. Eight, eight and eight. And uh, James says, I keep forgetting that Jacoby went to Green Bay. Scary. Is it, though? Is it, though? When we talk about the Green Bay Packers tomorrow, we'll be diving deep into this Aaron, t- in, 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 into this uh, Josh, Josh uh, Jacobs. We'll be talking about this. Lou Man thinks playoff fever is alive in Minnesota. I think they are firmly out of it at this particular point. I have them at six wins on the season. They're having six and 10 going into week 18, going into Detroit final game of the season. Vikings really don't have anything to play for at this particular point. I think they're well out of the playoff picture. Six, 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 six wins or seven wins is not going to get you into the NFC playoffs this season, unless you're winning the winning the division. And I think uh, the winner of the NFC North will have at least 11 wins. Uh, but the Detroit Lions, I think they will be battling for the NFC title in this particular game. This is a must-win game for the Detroit Lions to win the title and to potentially have a first-place seed. So I do think the Lions do win this game, given J.J. McCarthy his first divisional loss as a star st- starter, but on the positive, the... Minnesota Vikings finish the season out four and three, giving them a total record of six and 11. I think they are six and 11 team. I think Sam Darnold just isn't the guy to really quarterback this team. And the first nine, 10, 11 weeks is really, really rough. If you're a Minnesota Vikings fan. Now I understand that they want to redshirt JJ the whole season. They want him to, you know, let him, learn on the sidelines and do everything he can from the sidelines. But I think come week, you know, 13, 14 there, sorry, it'd be 12, be 11, 12. I think finally they pull the trigger and they let JJ become a starter and they win three of three of four and winning um, uh, four of their last seven. 
I th- kind of think they get on hot. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Am I too high? Am I too low? John thinks they will finish eight and nine this season. I could see wins over the Jets and the Jaguars. That would give them eight wins, or the Cardinals even. That would give them eight, like eight wins. I think John, you were right there in the wheelhouse. You know, I, you're not too far off. Lou Man says maybe they win, maybe they lose, and bust out. What whatever way, good season. Yeah, I. So when I was talking to Mike Reeves off the air, right, pre-show, and I think he even said this in the interview, he said, as true Minnesota Vikings fans, we do not expect anything this season. We understand this is a building year for the Minnesota Vikings. And we understand that Sam Darnold is our guy and he isn't going to lead us to a Super Bowl by any stretch of the uh, imagination. But I told him, the Vikings have a lot of good pieces around. They have Jordan Addison. They have Jet. They have Aaron Jones. They have TJ Hawkinson. They have a really good back seven on the defense. Offensive line, I don't know. I haven't watched enough of their training camp yet, which training camp for veterans for Minnesota starts on next Tuesday, I think it is. But with that being said, like the Vikings could, guys, easily be a eight win team they could have playoff fever like Lou man was saying they're not a bad team they are legitimately probably a quarterback away and I think if JJ McCarthy were to play the full season start him week one this is your team eight nine wins is not out of reach for them but the fact that they're playing Sam Darnold till week 11 week 12 I think that is their ultimate downfall in the end. Lou Man says, I'm going to say 8-8 eight and eight and eight going into week 18 with hope. With hope. James Frank says, Amara, my favorite wide receiver in that division. I think he'll be a top five receiver in the league this year. To think my Browns pick Anthony Swartz over Amara. Armora, am I saying it right? Armora St. Brown, he is definitely a very, very good talent. He is a perfect fit in Detroit. I like everything about him. He has that grit. He has that cockiness. And what he keeps a list of like the 20 some odd receivers that are drafted to be for him, right? He he's a perfect fit in Detroit. And to say that he's going to be a top five receiver, I you are not wrong. Because when we look at top five receivers in this game, uh, I got, I'm going in 224, not going off a pass or anything like that. No order. I'm just naming the top five off the top, top of my head here. You have CD. You have Jamar Chase. You probably have A.J. Brown. Tyree Kill. And then St. Brown is probably tied with like a J, with like Jaden Jaden Waddle. Debo, um, uh, uh, Christian Watson, right? Like they're all kind of right. They're all kind of inner, like intertwined there from five through eight. And I don't think you can justify putting one or the other in. Like I wouldn't have a valid, a, a valid argument, right? But yeah, I think Amra is a top five receiver. Lou Man says I get to watch a lot of Vikings games. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Un, un, unfortunately, and like, I mean, I have the NFL Sunday ticket, and when I'm not watching like my team, I don't only watch the uh, red zone. I don't watch a lot of Vikings games, but I will start to probably tune into a lot more. Um, John Lou Luman says, thank, thank, thank you for having Man Hour Machine. Got to go getting flooded out. Listen, man, I don't know where you're living. I'm assuming probably Nashville. There's a lot of rain head. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky, and we're in flash flood flood warnings right now. Lucky I live on a hill, but I can't get out of my house. It's there's a literally river running down the middle of our road. Like I like I like I get it. Be safe out there. But guys, I do have the Minnesota Vikings going six and eleven this season. That is tied with the Bears at six, six and eleven. Let me know. Too high, too low. 
But tomorrow, guys, we're talking Green Bay Packers with my man, Green Bay Greg. Until then, see you tomorrow, 2.30 East Coast time right here at Facebook.com and, of course, YouTube.com. Until then, we out.